If you work hard in life, God will put certain people in your life right when they need to be there. And these guys down here in Georgia and a few other places have been the people that have been put in mine. And while there's some good things about these guys, there's also some real quirky things about them. Some of their life choices are questionable, like their food choice, and also the tools they use to work with to build boats. We're gonna be evaluating those and offering some suggestions and showing you ultimately what they've got right and what they've got wrong. All right, here is the boat working on. Here is other things. I don't even wanna know what all that is. I love Harbor Freight tool carts. They're pro. I don't care what anybody says. I don't know what you guys think about this. This looks to me like if I was gonna run a professional shop this freaking big, right? This is a big shop. This is not small. It's a big bay, capable of doing great things in this bay. This is <laughs> this is your tool spread. Now, just to be fair, there's some more over there in that toolbox. And then like there's some in these cabinets, but like as far as like your main power tools that are exposed to the world, let me see the tried and true original Milwaukee Gen 1 non-fuel bandsaw, very reliable. We've all made a lot of money with this tool. The Bauer vacuum. Uh, I mean, I've never used it. You can't really hate on it. This thing, I don't know. I mean, these seem like pretty safe tools. All they're doing is blowing air. Now this driver, Ryan, this is Ryan's driver. He will not let go of it. He's gonna hold on to it forever. But this driver, <laughs> this is an apprenticeship level tool. It is held up. Like what I'm saying, apprenticeship level tools are reliable, just not very strong. And so this is actually just held up, but like you can tell when he's using this one and we're all using Milwaukee Gen 3 or even DeWalt XR like drivers, he just gets left behind. So, I mean, I don't know, he keeps that over for like sentimental sake, but I mean, here it is. Here's this bad boy, works really nice, but we haven't been doing carpet for a while. I mean, mine just sits on my shelf and looks pretty. Mm-hmm, I like. I also like, man, I don't even have this one. This is nice. All right. This is like maybe the most important tool. If you're gonna be a, a true fabricator, you need installation drivers. This thing is true. Like this is the best one too. And I've tried them all, like the Bosch, Chameleon or whatever. And then the DeWalt, I mean, sorry, the DeWalt, I have the DeWalt one. I bought it as just an alternative to see whatever, cause I needed a two installation drivers and DeWalt had one and there were no more Milwaukee. So I bought the DeWalt one. It's not as good, but I'll do a review on it later on my DIY channel to show you. But the heck is this? Oh yeah, another apprenticeship level one, but he's just using that to hone out our countersink rivets. That's fine, whatever. Got eight million different chargers. You could, all right, whatever. Look, hmm. I wonder how long this lasts. I mean, the other tools, it's whatever. Some power tools are actually all right, but I mean, when you actually have to start putting pressure on them and beating them up, I wonder how long they last. I, I'm, I mean, I just always avoided them. Like you can take one look at them, you're like, hmm. I think Chris over here has a love affair. -ish. He has a love affair with power tools. Ooh, the cutoff wheel. A little big, a little obnoxious. Here's the Milwaukee cutoff wheel, which is better. They're 18, that's a 20 volt line. This is a 12 volt line. This thing, I actually stopped using this because I'll show you why. Because the tools that we're gonna get these guys today, they'll make this thing kind of, we ended up, we ended up turning this thing into a band file. It's the best band file ever. I love it. Rivet guns, for sure. The Milwaukee rivet gun, we probably sold inadvertently more, more Milwaukee rivet guns for Milwaukee than Milwaukee could ever do by itself. Like Bauer again, huh? Either Chris just burns these out and replaces these at will because they're so cheap and I don't, I don't, some people are like that. They're like, it's cheap, I'll just replace it if it burns out. It's cheap to begin with. And I'm, I'm all about a buy once, cry once mentality. But people are like a buy cheap and cry many times mentality. I think that's Chris's mentality with the Bauer. 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 Bauer again. Bauer brushless. Oh man, they're getting bold. Bauer. Like, what, what do we got here? Like... That's a lot. I'm saying this is a lot just to power the file. But whatever, at least they have one. Because the band file is a pretty useful tool in fabrication. It's like one of those must-have tools. You got the Dremel. Who cares what the brand is? The Dremel's a Dremel. Like, truly, like, all of them are, are knockoffs of the original. This is needed. The corded ones, I think a lot of them are just knockoff corded ones. It's probably... I love this tool. I don't know if this one works really well, but I have the Bauer one. Works fantastic. Uh-oh, got a Dewalt. Got a few other things. And there's a bunch of stuff in there. Which even then, some of these things, as I've worked here a little bit, have been kind of whatever. Okay, my assessment of these guys, not bad, but also not great. They could be better. Let's go help them out. What are you doing? What's all that? Some new tools, man.
Did you already try to break them? You ain't got to use them yet. We're here to get ready. Like, if you're gonna have a shop, have good tools. I'd be like, you only need a few. And then, and then it's down to just pristine. But like, that really does affect your workflow, especially if you were doing a boat by yourself or if you got a low man crew. You got a bunch of people, you give them like crappy tools, oh, you still got like four people. So it kind of makes up for crappy tools, but when you're just by yourself, you need good tools. That's just facts. Some people still can't get that, but it's true. All right, let's truly take a look at some starter tools or some not starter tools, but a starter lineup of really good tools that I think are very good for any fabricator. Doing this, like this definitely, oh, well, there is, there's a lot of this in here that is welded and you can visibly see that, but a lot of it in here is riveted. So there's a pretty good combination between rivets and welding that we do. And the rivet gun saves your hands, saves time, saves money, all those things. I have an M18 one, but it's like really big and bulky and doesn't really work very well for tight compartments in terms of what we do. So we just generally only use the M12. Oscillating tool, I mean, that's a must to have. The bandsaw I think might be the most underutilized, like best kept secret ever. Like anytime I use this, and this is around skilled craftsmen. When I bust this thing out, I start using it and I start cutting all kinds of different odd shapes with it and doing things. And the same thing always comes out of their mouth. Hey, I need you and your your fancy saw over there, and that's like that's like everybody, <laughs> even my guys. Like when I when I showed up to them for like tin can crew builds, and I busted this thing out, and they're all looking at it, and then they tried to to take it from me, and eventually like they got some sense and went and got their own. Like this, Ryan. Ryan's the only guy who like listens to me. Everybody else super hard headed in the crew. Ryan listens. Tell him, Ryan, go get a bandsaw. What do you do? Went and got a bandsaw. Ryan, go get a rivet gun. What do you do? Got a rivet gun. See, Ryan. Every good tool in here is because of Ryan. Every not so great tool over here. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't think Ryan would have bought that. This I get, I got for them because I feel like this tool is a must. It does such a good job of making the Milwaukee cutoff wheel here obsolete that I actually went and bought a band file kit to turn this thing into an electric band file. And it's way better as a band file than it is a cutoff wheel. It's actually, is a much better cutoff wheel and just much better designed. And this feathering trigger, you can really You can use this thing to fabricate and soup up and, and do things and get in tight ends. Like there are just certain tools that are fabricating must. I feel like the angle die grinder is a fabricating must. Another fabricating must, the straight die grinder from Milwaukee. For many of the same reasons other than it's straight, which gives you a different angle, different way of working and a different amount of leverage. And these are camper bits. These are the chief camper bits from Harbor Freight, which I would say are extremely good quality. Like, like they don't ever die. And they don't ever get jammed up with the large flutes there. So they chew away aluminum. You chew away with aluminum with the ones that are meant for steel. It'll just jam them up and they'll become useless. And you'll have to sit there trying to dig it all out of the flutes. It's terrible. But the, you get the large flute like that. You don't have to worry about that. Same thing. And I've had to use these tools today. You ever heard the term two is one and one is none? I almost have two of everything in my shop for a reason. And this is the actual Gen 4. I have the Gen 3s. Milwaukee M12 fuel driver. This thing is extremely powerful. And the Gen 4 is actually, I think, even a little bit more perky than the Gen 3, which is hard to believe. Gen 3 is actually very perky. I would say the Milwaukee is more and more catered toward the fabricator, for sure, in terms of what their tool spread is and what it does and how well it is. One thing the other tool brands, despite how hard they try, have never been able to replicate, it's a small Milwaukee battery. The fact that their batteries are so small, they just pretty much end up becoming an extended grip for the handle. That allows you quite a bit of leverage. And I know these are just the, the 1.5, but they actually made fuel version of this battery. It's like light gray instead of black. And it is, you can feel the full power. It doesn't last very long. It's the smallest little battery, but man, the power that comes from an actual driver. So these fuel, these fuel lines are pretty powerful with just a standard one. But if I, yeah, I stick a three amp hour in there, then it's much more powerful. It's gonna rival any 18 and 24 or 24 volt line tool out there from the Pro Tool line. Absolutely destroys any apprentice level tool by itself at half the volts. I got this as a combo. I also got the Gen 4 uh, M12 drill and I was really skeptical about this because I really didn't know what this like tiny little drill is gonna be capable of, but it's quite, quite powerful. Especially again, with a 3.0 or higher battery. And so we've been doing some pretty good things, seen some pretty good results thus far from these tools. The only thing we're missing here really to make us completely dangerous is a band file. We're also missing a belt sander and a few other ones, but whatever. Some stationary tools. I, don't, I mean, you can get whatever brand channel locks you want. I do like some of Milwaukee's stuff. 
the Brian channel locks is actually, I don't think there. And as far as clamps, you need clamps. Clamps are clamps though, whatever. I will say that these have lasted a very long time for me. These DeWalt ones, like they've outlasted all clamps. I'm like, it's a clamp, it's whatever. I would get the Harbor Freight ones, they would break. I break in a lot of Harbor Freight clamps and I'm still all about the buy once, cry once mentality. So, I mean, these, I've had them on there. I've had them clamping things. I've welded things with them. Obviously the, the tips melt, but whatever. I did want me to mention Prime Weld and that they have a spool gun and a TIG machine and they are really well working. I got to see the spool gun in action today. It is a pretty good spool gun. And this is only 500 bucks. 500 bucks. For that, that's cheap. That's extremely cheap. It's like a Prime Weld 185 and it comes with a spool gun and, and it's getting a lot of good reviews. Prime Weld is, a, is a, like, they have a weld shop down here that's a local dealer. Apparently, this is a really good machine to get into for beginning, if you're beginning to weld. It has a very good spool gun design. Then he's got a TIG machine. He's got TIG rods here, different thicknesses, probably 40, 43, and 50, 50, 53, 56 TIG rods. And this is a pretty serious cart. Like, I have never seen this cart before. This is a big cart. The Vulcan cart? This is like a legit weld cart. Holds two big tanks. Got compartments here. Man, I could use this. Dude, yes. This is what I'm talking about. Hold all your tips, hold all, all your consumables, hold all your brushes, your welding pliers, your tip pliers. All your TIG torches, all your, yeah, that's a big deal because TIG stuff, TIG stuff is whatever. TIGging is a whole new monster that I have to I have to dig into. Like, I can't get away from push-pull MIG though. Other than like, it's, it's got some manual settings and you got to figure out what all that is. Now, the TIG machine is much more complicated than obviously this one where it's just like, you know, wire speed and volts. And that's what you're going to have to worry about. But other than that, like, I don't know, upslope, downslope, end current. Man, that's a lot of crap. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just showing you this. And I'm just vouching for them because they say, because they both say these are fantastic machines and they've done some really good things with these machines. I've, I've personally witnessed with them. Trying to get into welding, I encourage everybody to get into welding. Everybody. You want to be a pro welder, that's something else. But in terms of like an actual DIY skill, everybody should learn to weld, at least still. And if you want to get into aluminum, I guess these are really good machines to get into aluminum for pretty cheap, which is good because getting into aluminum is expensive. You got to buy an argon tank. I don't know. I spent so much money getting into aluminum. Okay, one thing they were missing from yesterday was... Apparently hardware. We went and got them some more stuff. Hey guys, come here real quick. Hey. So gentlemen, now that you've tried like real tools, what do you think of them? They're okay. All right. That just all right? <laughs> I mean, it looks... I really like the, what is the little zzz, 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 zzz. That's the impact driver. No. The no, the other, that, no, the, the impact driver is a you gotta learn the noises, man. This little thing. The die grinder? die grinder? Yes. That's gonna come in handy. It's also very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, that's what I do like. Those. The only thing I don't like about these is the little safety. Like, that takes a little getting used to. You know what? I think once I get used to it, it won't be as bad. I guess it's like... It's just opposite of what you're normally used to. It's probably like getting new fishing gear. It just takes a little while to get used to. But I like that. This is my favorite, though. This little, this is the mini meat. Yeah, it's a bad little. This thing, it just goes. That's why we call it the mini meat. It just keeps on going and going and going. What did y'all get today? We went and got you like, you guys have problems here. What kind of problems? Mental? We know No, that. you guys have tool problems. You, because of the lack of your tool spread and the quality of your tool spread, you guys are losing money. Professionally. Really? Yes. Now that you haven't made money using these tools, is that because you can't work as fast or as efficiently, you couldn't have made as much money as you could have. So for the last year, I haven't made any money because I have- You have lost money tools. because <laughs> how slow they work and how many you've had to buy from burning out. Think about it. I, I have I, not burned out a single Harbor Freight tool. I'm only doing a couple. Huh? You, all right, if you want to lie in front of the camera, it's fine. <laughs> I know what Would you like about. me to take you to Actually, the tool pile? Yeah, we do have a graveyard. We have the first drill that Ryan burned up. Okay. The second one I don't even think is here anymore. I think I end up throwing it across the parking lot. Uh -huh. We got another drill that Ryan burned up. How did you burn it up, Ryan? Drilling three inch oh, holes. Yeah. Uh, last, last hole. And then this. My... How do you burn up an orbital sander? Ask him. I don't know. Oh, it's because it's a bower. That wasn't good. I don't think they're getting it. Either way, we appreciate it. I don't think. Yes, we do. I think they're stuck. 
this little thing's awesome too. Here's the, oh yeah, you like that one too? The little drill with the chuck on it. I would have never thought that the 12 volt drill and impact was as powerful as it is, but I like the compactness of it because we work in a lot of really tight spaces and this is definitely helpful. That's Splitter 3000. What, is that, what does that even mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> Not Splitter 3000? Splitter 3000. Oh, oh that yeah. thing? Oh no, where's the, down here. That's not a whole hog. That's like a, a heavy duty drill. That is a impact. This is drill. Not That's like a hammer drill. Hammer drill, hammer drill yeah. yeah. You, guys should, thing is great. you guys should look into a whole hog for like, I don't know if they'll fit the, the uh, those bits, but if they take a drill truck bit. Hey guys, I, really for what we're doing, the M12 line is probably, probably all you really need. You can get some M18s, I think for bigger, bigger things like drilling through transoms or taking out some rail stuff. Like, then maybe the M18 line's all right, but that M12 is pretty powerful. You didn't get you didn't get to use this one as much, did you? No, but it's still a good tool though. I think it's gonna have some good I mean, pieces. we did cut it, we did cut out the uh, the accessory panel with it. This plus a hole saw. <laughs> Obviously the accessories to your tools matters. Now you can get any line, any brand you want, but just you need extensions, you need a lot of these, a lot of 316 inch drill bits. It's really good just to have a whole impact ready line. I mean, ones that fit into trucks, fine, but these will fit into anything. Collets, extensions, the, you can put, you can go places with these. You cannot go with standard ones. I would have liked to get them a locking collet extension, but I couldn't find one there at Home Depot. That's generally pretty likely. You're not gonna find those unless you go to like a weld shop. And then obviously a good spread of bits. All these things were lacking in the shop that are now not lacking. In short, Tools matter tremendously in terms of project speed and prowess. The more you have, the more versatile you are, the powerful and better quality they are, the faster you can work. It's as simple as that. And every once in a while I hear the odd comment of, well, you know, why am I gonna invest in all these tools just to build one boat? And then what am I gonna do with them after that? I find it very difficult to believe that after learning the skill set of everything it takes to build a boat from start to finish that you'll wanna ever get rid of those tools. You'll have new skills, new outlooks on how to make things, and you'll definitely wanna keep those things around. It's not like you're gonna go back to woodworking after you build something like this. It just doesn't happen. I mean, maybe if you get nostalgic or something, but really metalworking, fabricating, wiring, decking, turfing, all that stuff. You need good tools, guys. Look into them. This ain't no sponsored stuff. This is just advice we have. Thank you guys, take care.